Is this solar lantern uh, as dangerous as people have indicated? It's nice and bright. Uh, let's see, what could possibly be wrong with this? I saw this on uh, BigClive.com, and uh, he really stressed how bad it was. Well, here's mine. I was wondering if there was a difference between the 120 volt version and the 220 that he would have. Now, first off, uh, beautiful quality control here. Uh, that's not too good. But his main thing was that, uh, well, you can get line voltage on the output of the USB. So, let's see. Okay, I'm going to, first off, oops, plug it in. And notice that... Uh, we don't even have 5 volts on the output of the USB. Okay, I've hooked this up uh, and dropped the other end into my ground. And let's see. Oh, just 118. Well, basically it's line voltage here. Uh, that would give you a nasty little zap. So right off the bat, uh, quality control or design zero. Now I'm going to gently turn this around, plug it back in. Uh, about three-ish volts uh, AC. This here has no polarity set up and this end has no polarity set up. So basically it's Russian roulette when you plug it in and you can get mains on the outs but but let's see what's a usb like let's just get this out of the way well first off it's uh four volts it ain't five now let's uh, start increasing the load well you can do 10 milliamps 20 milliamps 30 milliamps. Hey, it's rocking. Uh, 40 milliamps, and it's already starting to drop. 50, 60 milliamps, and it's below 4 volts. 80, 90, 0 0.1 of an amp. And that failed at 0.12 uh, amps. So this thing can't output anything. Uh, obviously the batteries in this thing are probably a piece of garbage. Now, did I buy this simply because I wanted something nice and dangerous? No. Uh, why I bought it was I have a lantern that is... Ah, uh, drop. Sign said, no soliciting. I'm not interested. Oh, we're just selling something to the neighborhood. Uh, that was the door. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, I bought this because I had a lantern that I was hanging above my Christmas stocking out in the front yard. And when a windstorm hit, eh, it got destroyed. So that's why I bought this. It looked like it was a nice design. I could take it, hang it, uh, run um, voltage into here. Uh, five volts, and uh, I'd have a brand new spanking nice uh, uh, lantern, and I'd probably change this down in here also. So that's why I bought it, not because I thought it was any useful for anything else. So let's tear it apart. So I've uh, fast forwarded this, obviously. The reason is, is simply it's just repeating what somebody else has done on uh, YouTube. And I want to try to be unique, at least uh, in some things. I left the uh, beginning part in because I wanted to stress that uh, this thing isn't safe. And that, yeah, there's line voltage on the output, just in case somebody hasn't seen the other person's video. And, of course, the fact that the batteries on the thing are a piece of garbage 
and may not even be rechargeable. Who knows? But, on to the next step now. So here's a schematic of it. It's almost identical to the one Big Clive had. In this case, going from left to right, uh, we have the capacitive dropper. They actually do have a 400 volt uh, rated capacitor in here. This all limits the amount of current coming to the rest of it. We have a 1K uh, resistor with LED going from AC to the ground to show that it's turned on and charging. We have the solar cell or solar panel uh, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six cells in this one. Tiny. Uh, that would supply current for charging the battery. We've got an extra uh, diode here for some reason. But if you're using a conventional current, uh, the charge falls through here and also through here, over to the battery, around and about, and then back up to there. So the battery, I uh, don't know if it's a nickel or cadmium uh, metal uh, hydrate, hydrate, whichever. Um, but uh, there's no charge circuit for this. So this may not last that long. And it's probably not worth trying to fix this. Now, the interesting part over here is for the USB connector, the shield is not connected. Yet, when I showed it earlier, it was at 120 volts. And that's because the device I plugged in has the ground and the shield connected. Hence creating the circuit to where you can get 120 volts on this point. Now, the obvious thing is if you wanted to actually continue to use something like this, it'd be just to... Um, silicone or hot glue this thing full, ignore it being used for USB. That doesn't fix the battery charging part though. Over to the LEDs, there's six on top in parallel and one on the bottom. I'm not sure if there's multiple um, emitters uh, in this one. It is very bright. Uh, let's see, the bridge rectifier is MB10F. Uh, this diode was an A7, and I still don't know why they put it in there, it's, uh, since it's basically in parallel with the one inside the bridge rectifier. Uh, and, of course, none of this fixes this uh, dodgy cable, which is, I don't believe I showed is metal. Now, is this thing gonna zap you if you've got this uh, filled in? Well, there's really no metal on this thing. Uh, so unless you're operating it plugged in, in the rain, uh, it's not going to get you that way if you've got this thing sealed up. But it's not worth buying. Uh, you might as well just buy a proper one uh, from a brick and mortar store instead of an eBay one, uh, which is getting around the regulations. I forgot to mention exactly how you get zapped. Okay, if you've got a device plugged in here and the shield and the ground are connected, we've got four cases. Case one, hot is here where it's supposed to be. On the positive side, you have a human on this point here. And the only thing between that human and normal ground is a diode. Not a problem. Or it shouldn't be a problem. Case two. This goes negative. It's AC. So now you have human diode capacitive dropper. Hmm. Well, that means you're getting, uh, if the resistance of this is, uh, or the impedance of this is about 4,700 ohms, uh, you get about 36 milliamps. Not good if it's across uh, your heart. Actually, it's not good across any part of your body. Okay, but what happens if the hot is here and it's 50-50 chance when you plug it in? Well, on the positive, you have the ground, the human, the 
basically the whole circuit resistance and the diode. Not exactly sure how much current, but it's irrelevant because this thing's going to go negative at some point. Uh, real fast, actually. Then you're going to have a human connected to this point. You've got your diode. And you've got around 120 volts AC, uh, which means a peak around 170, minus 170. Uh, zapped. Not a good design. Don't use it. Make sure this thing's plugged. So, that's it for the schematic. And now I'll show what I'm about to do to this thing. Well, that's what's left of the old one. So on the original one, I ran the voltage in on the red and the yellow wire. And the ground back on the black and the green. First, it's time to uh, bypass that switch, uh, because it's going to be on the end of a long pole. And the next part to take out is that switch. So that's how it's uh, wired. Got the red coming down, goes to the top board, then it comes down through the diode, or LED, uh, to the on-off switch uh, for the bottom light, which I'll bypass and connect up to the yellow and the white going back up. So that's now connected. I added a resistor in there because I don't want this super bright. I put in a 33 ohm uh, resistor. And now it's hot glue time. So it's now all glued together. You can see that in there. There, got wire holding it. Hopefully it won't fall apart again. And now it's just a matter of hanging it outside. What I do is I power all this either from a power bank, one of those, or I might have it everything set up in the, um, my main box. And then it's fed uh, AC to uh, wall wart to out to this. Uh, eventually it'll be on the end of a long pole sticking out into the middle of nowhere. And there will be a stocking underneath it.